Welcome back to our video series on how to get started in cut and thrust with a long sword. We've covered our basic cutting mechanics and some fundamental stepping actions in order to support that so that we can work on our solo training against a target. Today we're going to introduce some other concepts uh, in how to cut and some different cuts that we can start to incorporate into our practice. We're going to start with some cuts that incorporate the back edge of the sword. This is what the Italians call the false edge, or the Germans call the short edge. Uh, I might alternate its use. Uh, right now we're being very style agnostic, so it doesn't really matter. These are just fundamental concepts that we can incorporate into our training, so that when we uh, explore other manuscripts or other styles, or we start to get out on the competition field, we can utilize all of the tools uh, at our disposal. So uh, we've already encountered one of these cuts, which is this rising false edge cut in the center that we used early on in our basic star. Uh, we can use that same cutting action to actuate the hand to the wrist in order to drive the, 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 uh, the, the cutting edge of the sword upwards. We can use that from an angle by starting our sword in one of our side guards Right? So if we're in a German version, this is a German guard called change. We'll get to guards later. But if our sword is now diagonally towards the side, we can use that same action to rise the blow up and forwards. And same thing if our sword is diagonally on our right side, we can use that false edge, the short edge, using that same actuating of the wrists to drive those point, that point up and forwards. It's exactly the same as what we've done before. We've just now changed it from the side. The thing about these cuts is they're not very strong. Uh, they're not very powerful and driving against an opponent. You can, you can drive, you can use them maybe to place a thrust. You can throw them against the flank, but if you do, you end up exposed to a counter cut to your head because if your blade is low, you're open at an angle, right? And same thing here. Uh, what they're really good for, I like to think of them in, in Meyer's terminology of calling them slashes. They're really good for slashing the blade upwards. You can displace your opponent's sword with a nice good cut and prep for a follow-up blow. Or you can strike to the hands, strike to the arms. Um, these are really good ways of uh, keeping a threat on your opponent, taking away their opportunity to hit you. Uh, but also keeping your distance from them in that time so that you're not exposing yourself to a counter cut to the head. So another variation on this false edge cutting that we see uh, is in earlier medieval styles. Um, you can throw your downward and horizontal blows from your weak side. So if you're a right hand fighter, your left side, if you're a left hand fighter, your right side, uh, you can throw those blows, those same blows can be done with the back edge of the sword, or the short edge of the false edge, um, in a similar fundamental cutting mechanic. You don't have to change too much. Uh, if you throw that downward diagonal blow, instead of throwing it out with your long edge, you throw your hands forward exactly the same way, but with your, uh, with your palms changed. So now you're striking with the false edge. So instead of having my palm sort of down and diagonal this way, my palm is now up and diagonal that way. The back of my hand is facing where the front of my hand was. And I can throw that same blow here. It doesn't necessarily work from your strong side as well. Um, because following through on it puts it into where your chest is. But if you throw from your weak side because of the way that your shoulder is associated, your front shoulder is associated with this cut, you get a lot more defense in that blow. So you can throw downward diagonally and especially you can throw down uh, across horizontally with that false edge and throw through as you make that same step. So when you throw long edge, false edge, long edge, false edge, doing that nice and slowly, right? You can go from shoulder guard to shoulder guard just throwing those horizontal cuts with your long edge and your false edge cut. You can throw that same blow long edge, false edge, you see the different mechanic and how to throw that blow. So now let's talk about our downward blows with the short edge of the sword or the false edge of the sword. These often in German are referred to as Schielhaus or Scheidelhaus. 
uh, depending on where you're throwing the blow, the angle you're throwing the blow. But the difference between these blows and what we've shown before is the rotational properties of the sword change. We're no longer sending our hand into the zone in which we're cutting towards. What we want is a rotation of the sword to happen uh, at the midpoint of the blade. So we want to send our sword, our hands, high, and we want the point of our sword to go low. So when we throw this blow uh, from our strong side, we want to lead out again with the short edge. One of the mistakes I see uh, people do is they twist the sword in their hand and they try to throw like this and they're not actually throwing, they're not getting a rotational property on their sword. They've twisted the sword, but the sword has essentially just become the new long edge. What we want is the back of our hand, we want the rotational property of the sword so that the pommel is going to go up and the point is going to go down as we throw this blow. So as we step in, we rotate our hands out, send the hands to the center and then up. So we still want to come through that line, so we're crossing the center. We're not throwing out like this and being unsafe. Our sword is still out in front of us, so we're sending our hands across the center line but high. And we're allowing the rotational property of the blade to work so that the point comes through an arc that goes high low and the pommel goes from an arc that goes low high in order to drive the point in behind our opponent. This will strike down at their ear behind the sword. Use the same fundamental stepping mechanics. We can step forwards and make that blow or we can step out and make that blow and make a new rotation to our new line, right? So when you turn, lead with the back of your hand. I really like having my thumb near the flat of the blade, not directly on it, but near the flat of the blade. So I think about turning my thumb towards my opponent. And now my sword is sort of resting on my thumb just a little bit. I want my elbows to stay down. I don't want my elbow to pop out backwards. So when I throw the blow this way, my hands are going to cross. My palms are going to face that direction, but my hands are crossed. So if I were to throw the long edge, my palm would be facing that way. Same from the right side, my palm faces this way. In these back edge blows, my palm faces the other direction. And again, I make a rotational property with the sword so that the, the point and the cutting arc of the sword is downward. The pommel is going to go upward in this case. Cut. Right, so I rotate my hands out, I lead with that back edge, step in behind, my hands still go across the center, cut. Either one of these blows can be turned into a straight vertical blow with a small rotational property of the hands and orientation of the body so that as I come forward instead of throwing that diagonally I throw that same blow straight down. So I start at the point high and I throw straight down. And I can throw straight down from the other side as well from the left where I rotate my hands out with crossed hands and throw straight down. So I have downward and downward diagonal and straight down diagonal blows that I can throw. I notice I'm not throwing out like this because that exposes my head. I'm not defending the line of the cut and my opponent's coming. This is a different blow. We'll get into something like that, but throwing fundamentally, uh, throwing wide against your opponent like this is actually a good way to be exposed in the center line. It shortens your range and exposes you down here, right? If you're going to do that, you could use it as a slash, the same way we talked about slashes earlier in uh, this video. What we want to do with these, we want to protect ourselves with our hands, cut downwards from the left, uh, from the right, downwards from the left. Straight down vertical, one, 
and straight down vertical. So the last piece to introduce for the concepts we're covering today are the short edge cuts diagonally upwards with our hands defending our head, right? Because before we only did the slashes from the diagonals upwards. In this case, we're going to use the same cutting properties that we're using from our false edge downward blows. We're going to throw those blows rising up the diagonal line, keeping our hands in front of us and defending ourselves with our blade, right? Um, so in this case, instead of sending my hands outward and forwards to the diagonal line, I'm going to send them outward to the upward line, right? I'm cutting upward diagonal. So uh, I'm sending my hands forward. I'm sending my blade into the downward quadrant just like I would with my long edge cut, only this time I'm leading with my back edge. I'm going to send my hands upwards and I'm going to let the blade do that same rotational property in the stretch. Right, so there's my long edge cut. Here's my false edge cut. It's To me it sort of rests on the thumb just the same way I get a nice ground with the thumb here. I rest it on the thumb and I let that blade, that blow get a nice rotational property upwards. See it's actually, that blow is actually sometimes easier than the downward blow. It's the next blow that's harder. So from our strong side, the blade comes, the blade comes into the lower quadrant, our hands go up into the upper quadrant just the same way, boom, we lead with the back edge. We use our same stepping motions, either forwards or diagonally, and we stay grounded behind our sword. When we throw from our weak side, the crossed hands of this makes this more difficult. You'll end up arcing your back a little bit and turning your hip in order to get your blade into its target. Right? So when we throw this from the weak side, we do the same prop, the same properties as sending the blade uh, into the lower quadrant. We send our hands into the higher quadrant as we send them forwards. We step behind our blow, our blow with our foot, and we come up and in. Notice my hands are defending myself. I see a lot of people throw this here, and now my arms are actually in the way of my opponent's attack, and that's it. I'm not actually, if, if you're my target, I'm not actually hitting you, right? What I really want to do, open my hands up, let that relax in my palm. See how this hand's almost completely open, right? and I lead with that thumb and I step into that blow. There's my hip and my back rotation in order to get my hands above my head and get my blade in at my target. Okay, so now, once we've practiced those blows and we get used to them, we can really start to incorporate them into our movement and our practice against our target. So we can use those upward rising slashes from out of measure against our target. That allows me to approach safely, throwing a slash against their sword or into that space, against their arms or whatever is, happens to be there. It keeps them away from me before I launch my first attack, right? Once I've thrown that blow, I can start to move into a secondary blow and maybe I want to throw one of those false edge cuts. So I'm gonna choose the rising diagonal cut from my weak side and I can throw a blow there. And I can throw coming outward, a downward diagonal cut with my short edge and then I can step around and make another diagonal cut with my short edge. Maybe I want a long edge cut coming back. Right? Nice little combinations that I can transform one cut to the other, changing edges. Maybe I throw my first cut as a slash and then I want my first edge, first cut to be that short edge cut down, long edge cut up, long edge, short edge, and a long edge for my withdrawal. Right. All these things I can practice as I go 
making a slash, short, short, long, long. And I can throw some of those other blows in that we looked at some of the earlier medieval blows. False edge, long edge, false edge, long edge. Practicing various different actions. There's my long edge entry. I'm oh, sorry, my short edge entry. Now notice when I come here, I end up unprotected. So there's where my slash would come in. Or I'd throw up this way, staying protected against a cut to my head. So incorporate those cuts into your practice on your target if you have one. Otherwise, just practice them in the air. Um, you know, they're really good fundamental cutting mechanics that will serve you in various different purposes all the way along. Keep training, and we'll see you soon.